Good morning, everybody. Lovely to see you all. Um, and I hope that everybody that joins in our worship this morning will um, feel welcome and will feel God's presence. And I just want God to bless us as we uh, worship together. Um, I'd just like to read a couple of verses from Psalm 16. Uh, it said, Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasure at your right hand. And it was that line, you will fill me with joy in your presence. So if you're sitting there with a long face, change it because it was supposed to be filled with joy in God's presence. Um, our opening hymn uh, reminds us that our God is a mighty fortress, and we thank the village chap uh, chapel for leading us. Let's stand to sing. <coughs> There's one or two uh, strange words in there. That's because uh, it was written by Martin Luther just a few years ago. Let's uh, come to God in prayer. Lord, we come as we are. And we bring life as it is today for each of us. We know and we're grateful that there are no boundaries to your love. And you know each of us intimately. So we ask you to touch our worship, that we might experience you in our hearts and lives, 
speak through our hymns and minister to each of us wherever we are. We pray that through your word we might know you more fully, love you more deeply and serve you more faithfully. And we only want to do this to bring glory to your name. Amen. We're going to sing again and this time it's the new Scottish hymn band who are going to lead us in Thine Be the Glory. Let's stand to sing. Last week, uh, Peter reminded us that uh, all the sermons in January had been one word. So because it's February, today's message has got two words, okay? I just hope I'm not preaching in December. 
Anyway, there was a word that was swimming round in my head, and there's not a lot goes on in there, and um, it was the word endurance. And uh, I don't know why it suddenly came into my mind, but Carol also mentioned it at uh, the house group. So uh, later, we're going to be talking about um, not our human endurance, which of course can run out and defeat us sometimes, but uh, everlasting endurance. Our reading today is from Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 4. Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it's like to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, is that I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Familiar words, I know, but uh, hopefully we'll uh, get something from that. Um, As we come to prayer, one of the the hymns I I love to sing, and I, I love the words going round in my head, is, For this I have Jesus, Graham Kendrick. We'll just remain seated as we sing. For the joys and for the sorrows, the best and worst of times. For this moment, for tomorrow, for all that lies behind. Fears the crowd around me For the failure of my plans For the dreams of all I hope to be The truth of what I am For this I have Jesus For this I have Jesus
God, we come before you today to offer worship and praise for who you are. You're an awesome God who cares for each of us. And we thank you that we matter to you and that you care for us. We're grateful, as Brenda has just reminded us, for all that we have and we want for nothing and have the blessings of many good things. We thank you that you came as the Prince of Peace to bring healing to nations. You, ever, you overcame hatred with love. You ever overcame evil with good. And you're the light in the darkness. But Lord, we live in a broken and a bleeding world, so we want to pray for those who have to live in terror and torment, where tension encircles them constantly. We pray for those whose areas of the world and in those areas of the world that experience violence and war and injustice and hatred and cruelty. It's difficult, Lord, for us to think of what it's like, but there are people known to us who live in these kind of circumstances. So we pray for your peace and your love to permeate these struggling nations. We pray for our leaders and the important decisions that they make. They can reshape our future. So we pray that barriers might be broken down and divided people united. And the only way we can do this is through your grace and your love. We pray, Lord, for the various communities that we're involved in we remember those around about us that are struggling, that don't have shelter or enough money for food and bills. Respond to those people who are in need, Lord. We want to respond and we want to help them maybe physically, mentally and spiritually. So we pray that you would show us how we can bless them and encourage them and support them. We pray, Lord, for those known to us in our family, or as friends, or those in our church family here, we pray, Lord, that you would draw near to those who need your strength, your hope, your comfort, your restoration, and your love just now. So we, in the quiet moment, just bring people to you that we know just need your special touch. We ask, Lord, that as your servants, we might be inspired by your Holy Spirit to reach out to those in need. Make us sensitive, make us aware. We pray for ourselves, Lord, and ask that you would take us and make us useful in your service. 
And I'd just like to pray for two families who are known to us and uh, our prayers and thoughts are with them. The Bates family, John, who's a great friend here, his wife died recently. Her Thanksgiving service is at St Ninian's on Tuesday the 14th of February. Uh, sorry, Thursday the 15th of February at 2 p.m. And remember too, Lord, the Rutherford family. Alf is known to us and he went to be with his Lord a couple of weeks ago and his funeral service is at Emmanuel Pentecostal Church in Deckham on Wednesday the 15th of February at 10.30. Let's just pray for those two families. Lord, we thank you for these two families known to us. We thank you that they're uh, known to you too and for they've spent their lives serving you. And we just ask now that as Ruth and Alf are in your presence, that you would just bless them and the, they would have the joy of knowing you and reigning with you. But we know, Lord, that there's sadness here because of their families um, being left uh, with a loss. And we just ask that you would be with both of the families and strengthen each of them, because we ask it in your name. Amen. So at work, I get to meet all sorts of interesting people. Sometimes uh, I get to go out and meet them. And uh, increasingly, that's now happening once the pandemic's out of the way. But sometimes the only way that you can chat to people is via Zoom. And uh, I've had a few interesting Zoom conversations recently, and I'd like to share one of them with you this morning. And uh, it's a conversation that I had with a guy called Anatoly, who works for the Ukraine Bible Society. It's going, it's going very great. Uh, a lot of, a lot of interests for Bible. We, uh, to be honest, a <laughs> uh, little bit surprised, or very much surprised, in spite of all those difficulties uh, people experience because of war. Uh, people are very open to 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 receive Bible, to have Bible, and we're also very much surprised how many thousands of people we meet uh, this year who don't have a Bible and doesn't know mm, almost nothing about Bible. Yes, uh, people 60, 70 plus and young generation as well. Um, it's, it's, it's surprising us. So Bible distribution going on, and we reached already one half million Bibles distributed uh, last 10, 11 months. So here you are in the capital. We're only able to talk about because you're on a generator and we've managed to get a, an internet connection. When you go out with the Bibles, how far are you able to travel? Bible distribution is over the whole country. Our offices in Lviv, in, uh, in Kharkiv, uh, here in Kiev, distributing Bibles uh, to uh, re refugees, internal refugees, a lot, millions of, of people replaced, thousands of families who, who lost it, uh, apartments, property, houses, uh, lost it, everything. We, we met, I personally met several hundred people to whom I talk, to whom I have been speaking, that they had Bible, but this is burned destroyed in, in damaged buildings uh, houses so um uh, it's a lot of distribution in all of the old country but also we we are able to distribute bibles in um, war zone in the video you sent me there's, there's a shot of you pulling off the road to let a tank go past you and i have to say going where you are to distribute the bibles that looks all rather dangerous Almost every day, every second day, we experience in Kiev siren and uh, and rockets. They they shooting. Uh, just just recently, uh, one rocket hit it. Also, civilian who who slept in the apartment died. So, it depends <laughs> what what we what we put in. What is it's dangerous all of the whole country today because we are in war and enemy shooting rockets. Uh, and uh, in East Ukraine, where war zone, of course, this is uh, it's very intensive uh, war actions. Before our last trip, I have been in connection with uh, one pastor from Kramatorsk. And uh, I asked him, pastor or chaplain, we are packing vans. What, what uh, do you have a special request, special need? 
And he said, bring us hope. <laughs> people are asking for some hope, encouragement. And of course, people need humanitarian aid because this is the catastrophe how in, in which circumstances people in winter time are living there. But of course, I think on same level, maybe even more request is some, some words of hope, encouragement, people asking when this will be end. And if they see that we are from Bible society, from we are Christians from church background, uh, people people running to, to to talk to pray to ask because they they like experience that the church Bible can give them some 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 answer to 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 questions they have, and then of of course we we sharing with them what what we have and I always saying that um, that uh, this book this is not only book to 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 read through but this is something more you can start your conversation with god with creator who 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 are in charge and controlling all processes even when we don't understand when we're suffering when we cry when we have feel pain when we feel hopeless and when we see that evil almost like have a victory upon the uh, all all good things this this book helping this channel <laughs> helping us to to be connected to 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 another 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 source and receive uh, a message uh, from him and uh, and uh, yes people running and asking um, uh, uh, what what we can tell them uh, do we have a do we have a, some word of encouragement and uh, yes i i see to answer your question i see a big spiritually hunger in war zone especially in war zone among people who are st still there are you also able to give the bibles out to the soldiers on the front line yes we're doing a big ministry uh, with the chaplains for soldiers uh, bible society printed special edition uh, new testaments gospel for military the big piece of our ministry in front line with soldiers for soldiers we pray with them we read with them, we share gospel with them, uh, we are visiting some small points where they are in forest two or three. Are they surprised that you turn up with the Bible to see them when they're right on the front line? They're very much surprised and it's raised a big respect to Bible society. They're saying, what? You come here? Uh, because we're coming exactly to places with the chaplains where they are on positions so-called zero position where 250 meter overfilled is enemy looking uh to to each other uh, and we see uh how much how much uh they appreciate that we coming uh that we are not expecting them to the church or another place where church are but uh, Bible society, church coming to them where they are and defending our country. So we have, um, I, I, I think I am privileged to be part of this very special ministry, both for civilian and also for military, for soldiers, to be with them in, 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 uh, in uh, their, their ministry uh, where they, they are in the war. On the video clip that you sent me, you were praying the Lord's Prayer with a group of soldiers and you can clearly hear the explosions which you've described was just like 250 meters away. I noticed nobody flinched. Is there a sense of peace just in that moment when you're praying with people? I think the majority of people uh, will will react. But I, I learned I learned through 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 all this time that when we pray or read Bible, it's special peace coming to our hearts. And even you, you hear very close explosions. Um, uh, civilian, soldiers, they just keep keep on keep on what we are doing, reading Bible or praying or praying together. Or singing. We have been singing Christmas songs a lot. <laughs> Can I invite you to, to lead us in prayer, uh, maybe lead, pray a bit in Ukraine and, uh, and in English as well?
Дорогий наш Небесний Отець, ми схиляємо наші серця, наше єство в молитві перед Тобою, усвідомлюючи, що Ти є той Бог, який створив небо і землю, який керує всім, що відбувається на землі і в Всесвіті. І ми віримо, що Ти, Господи, керуєш всім, що відбувається тут, в нас, на нашій землі, яка страждає від жахів війни. Молим Тебе, Господи, про захист Твій, про благословення Твої, про милість Твою, про перемогу і про мир в нашій країні. Господи, зроби так, щоб ворог тікав з нашої землі і щоб мир запонував і добре життя в Україні і для нашого багатостраждального народу. В ім'я Отця і Сина і Святого Духу ми молимось. Амінь. Heavenly Father, we are praying together for the first of all situation on our land. Lord, we pray about your protection. We pray about your miracles to bring back peace and good life to our nation, to Ukraine, to people who are suffering so much because of war. We pray, Lord, that enemy will run from our land and that you will protect all people who are standing and defending our common home. Lord, bless everyone. and Let your peace be in our hearts, in our minds, and let tears be picked away with your hand from many people who feel pain right now. We pray in your holy name. Amen.
sing a lot of uh, Keith and Kristen uh, Getty songs, that, that was one of them, and uh, they're up for a Grammy uh, Award in Los Angeles tonight, so uh, let's hope that their work with Christian music uh, gets them that. Uh, we read earlier from Philippians, um, so just a, a little background, just so you know where it's at. Obviously, it was an important city and uh, a church very dear to uh, Paul's uh, heart. He was writing this letter to the Philippians while he was in um, a Roman prison, um, and he writes it because he wants to encourage them, and that's what I want to do today. Uh, we read that uh, Paul exhorts them to uh, unanimity and mutual assistance and who doesn't need a bit of that i love that here at beacon loft we do have a mutual assistance we do help each other and i think that's only a strength that we can uh, build on hopefully it happens in your church as well we all benefit don't we from a little bit of help from time to time um you know we need a bit of a backup in our lives because sometimes it, it we just can't do it all ourselves and uh, that same feeling that Paul had as he wrote to his friends, I think should be evident in us, really, that deep affection that showed that he cared for them, and uh, it kept him going as well as the Philippians that he was writing to. So as I said earlier on, our two-word title today is Everlasting Endurance. I picked up from reading uh, Premier's Christianity magazine, there were some uh, tips on uh, building, help to build up your uh, endurance. And I've, I've taken that and tweaked it a little bit to fit our situation uh, to help us build up not just our personal endurance, but the endurance as a church as we go through these variant times. Um, so the dictionary says this, it says that endurance is to bear something painful, stroke unpleasant, calmly for a long time. I don't really agree with that because I think sometimes we endure things that aren't painful necessarily, they're just a bit tedious and ongoing and, and, uh, and heavy. And as, as I said, the word persevere reads a bit similar. It says to continue to do something in a determined way uh, despite difficulties. We're talking about keeping on, aren't we? You know, keeping right on to the end of that road. William Barclay says, Endurance isn't just the ability to bear a hard thing, but to turn it into glory. That's the hard bit, isn't it? Turning it into glory and being thankful and giving praise when we're suffering for all sorts of different reasons. We spend a lot of our time, don't we, waiting. You know, we, uh, we wait in the queue for the bus or the till at the supermarket, we, uh, we wait for deliveries to, uh, to come, we wait for appointments, we wait for estimates and work to be done. We we'll hang on in there because we want the end result or the end product, so we're willing to endure uh, to get there. Lots of people uh, jog or run. 
Uh, some of them are super speedy over short distances and others are much more steady over uh, a greater distance. I don't succeed in either short or long running. I've never been able to run because I'm always out of breath. And as you know, being out of anything or short of anything is never a good thing. So uh, flat walking's absolutely fine with me. In this uh, little sojourn that we uh, call life, we need many things. And God provides us with everything that we need, whether we realise that or not. Because sometimes we ask for things that God doesn't think we should have, and when we don't get them, we feel aggrieved. But the things that we need, God supplies. And a couple of those useful uh, bits are uh, stamina and endurance. And that's both in my life personally, in yours, and also as a church, as a living being. As I look around you all this morning, I, uh, I'm guessing that we've all learned a few of life's lessons. And um, we've been uphill and down dale a bit, and we've, been, uh, we've taken a few knocks, and, uh, and we've come out the other end. Not necessarily unscathed, but we've got through it. Maybe now it's a, it's a good time to take a little bit of stock, uh, reminding ourselves that God's in control and it's only with his help that we've got this far anyway. Um, but also at the same time, um, we can build up our own endurance. So some suggestions, hopefully, that might uh, guarantee a few less uh, sleepless nights and furrowed brows. I've made a list of five. And uh, just to help you, uh, they're all, they all begin with C, so you'll remember them very easily, I'm sure. The first one is we need to choose to trust God. That's a very basic element, isn't it? <coughs> Verse 9 that we just read says, Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. And I love it that it, it doesn't say the God of peace might be with you. It says the God of peace will be with you. Um, that's a very firm yes. And, and we have to take, we have to choose to take that step of faith that allows us um, to trust in God and that in turn allows him to build us up. Verse 13 says, I can do all of this through him who gives me strength. No matter what stage we're at in life, um, I just think there's no better feeling, that, well, there's no feeling that beats trusting God and leaving all the heavy lifting to him. So we need to choose to trust, and then we need to check our focus, because I don't know if you're anything like me, but I get distracted very easily doing this, doing that, going here, going there. And um, it's just part of being part of a busy life, I guess. But verse 8 takes us back, doesn't it, and says those things that are noble and right and pure and lovely, admirable, excellent and praiseworthy, this is what we should be thinking about and this is what we should be focusing on. Not all the other stuff that crowds into our brains and lives. We need, in other words, to uh, step up our concentration levels, if you like. Because gazing around, wondering who's going to help us, doesn't really cut it. We've got to focus our sights, our eyes, on God. Reminded me of that very old hymn, you know, uh, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. So the things that crowd our lives that we think are really important and we've got to do it, maybe not so much. Filtering out the trivia, concentrate on the important stuff. We also need, and I'm, I mean, you, I'm talking to you and you know this as well as I do, we need to commit to prayer because uh, verse six <coughs> says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and Petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Now you and I both know that that's very easy to say and it's much more difficult to actually do. 
situations when our families are, are hurting or they're ill, when we ourselves don't feel 100% and we struggle, when we have financial concerns hanging over us, when there's important decisions to be made and we're confused as to which way to go, when situations get out of hand and we say and we do the wrong thing, we panic, we're anxious. And it's, that's, that's exactly the opposite of what God wants us to be. Personally, I think one of the things that obstructs my prayers when I'm having difficulties is that bit that we read that says, with thanksgiving. Because when we're in a hole and when we're banging up against a brick wall, to say thank you is, is really hard. And, and sometimes I think in circumstances I, 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 I back away from that because I'm thinking, how can I thank God for this? But that's what he asks us to do. Prayer, we know, is a lifelong commitment. And some of us have been on that commitment quite a while. But when we take on trust and focus in God, our prayer life takes on a whole new dimension. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says uh, this, uh, to pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayer and requests. Not just some of the ones that bother us the most, it says all of them. God wants to hear our voice no matter how weak and feeble sometimes it is. We need to continue, as I've just said, with thanks. Psalm 100, uh, verses 4 and 5 says, and, and we often sing this, don't we? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. It's not just God's love that endures forever. It's everything about him that endures forever. The list is endless. His grace, his patience, his faithfulness, his forgiveness, his strength, his support, his encouragement. And that's just to name a very few. Think of some more later on today. Just God is an enduring God. And the last one, to comfort ourselves. We're all good at beating ourselves up, aren't we? Um, but, you know, sometimes we need a bit of comfort. And that's probably when we're most vulnerable. We're not so good at, at, at giving ourselves comfort. We give other people comfort. But, you know, through trials or loss or bearing heavy loads and burdens, our greatest comfort is in God. But, you know, Christian friends can do a great job as well. And in my life, when, my time, when it's been hard for me, you out there have all been my support and uh, my comfort. Uh, Paul writes in the Second Corinthians chapter 7, and he says, When we came to Macedonia, we had no rest, and we were harassed at every turn, conflicts on the inside, fears within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. So sometimes we might be that person of comfort for somebody else, but also a person could be a comfort to us when we needed it. I've not said anything new this morning. Yeah, and I know you've, you've heard it before because many of you are uh, mature Christians, but choosing, you know, I'm sorry, as a teacher, I've always got a recap. Choosing, checking, committing, continuing and comforting are all ways that we can build up our endurance and maybe individually that's important but also together as a body of Christ's people. Ecclesiastes 3 14 says I know that everything that God does will endure forever because nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. It's perfect without any input from you or me. And just to encourage us into next week, 2 Timothy 2 verse 12 says, if we endure, we will also reign with him. That's a canny prize, isn't it, for people that don't deserve anything. 
We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. God gives it to us freely. If only we could fully comprehend all of that. Um, but we can if we stick close to God because we will endure all things and will never fail because he is with us. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us that uh, the strength that we need uh, comes from waiting upon the Lord. And, and maybe in a situation personally, you're waiting on him for guidance and help. As a church, we are waiting to see where God is leading us. And uh, our strength will come from waiting on the Lord. And uh, it's the Sutton Coalfield Baptist Church that are going to lead us. Let's stand to sing our final hymn. Faithful God, teach us to trust in your word. Help us to seek your will and to search for your truth. And as we offer our commitment in your service, we ask that you would bless us with the constancy of your love and you'd inspire and renew us through your Holy Spirit to endure whatever lies ahead for each of us. And we ask all of this through the wonder of your love and grace. Amen. Amen.